broadcasting live from sunny Mexico. Buenas tardes. I'm actually in sunny Mexico, too. Wait a second. If we're all in Mexico, in the same house, what are we doing on Zoom? Live from, from Mexico. Mexico. It's, it's a Maris Schilling Medical Advertising, Advertising Hall of Fame video. I had the distinct pleasure of working with Maris at KPR for about eight years when we were all in the creative department together and we were the best group of writers on the face of the earth. She was the most exuberant, passionate writer I've ever known. She'd get a briefing, not without batting an eye, she'd say, I got this. And she always did. She was talented, sharp as a tack. We had a lot of laughs together. I was a junior account person and Maris was like, a big executive creative director at the time, and she terrified everyone, but she didn't terrify me. And the reason is we were both Brooklyn girls, and nothing terrifies us. We connected right away uh, on my first day, and from there on, she taught me so much. Make a partnership with the creative team and how account and creative partners generate better work for the client, for the agency, and for all of us to be proud of. Maris was presenting a Tylenol sales aid, and she did it in the absolute persona of a sales representative, delivers this complete presentation with the clinical data and all of the information, asking for the doctor to recommend Tylenol, and it was really well done, and she sat down next to me, and she leans over to me, and she says, I totally made that shit up. You never, never, never knew what she was going to say next. She knew that if we showed the clients what was possible creatively, and even if it was beyond their comfort zone, that it would expand their consciousness as to what was possible. And it did work. I still remember the concept presentation where our clients stopped us right in the middle and said, now, where's the zany one? <laughs> oh, clients loved Maris. Fridays, we would send out one of the young guys with some money and they'd come back with half a gallon of vodka and half a gallon of orange juice. We'd, we'd throw out the garbage or garbage pails, line them with a plastic bag and fill them with ice and just sit in the office and drink till 7.30, 8 o'clock at night and then go out drinking. It was a bit challenging to be female in the advertising business. At the beginning, there were, how can I say, shenanigans going on behind closed doors. There is no fight that Maris would ever shy away from. And she was all about fairness because in her early days, people were unfair to her. And I think she vowed that that would not be the case if she ever got in charge. You want me to work up an entire corporate image campaign for $10? I can make you do it for nothing. I'm the boss. You're right. The work is $10. The lie is extra. And when she got in charge, she actually, quote unquote, put her money where her mouth is. When we hired Maris in 1979, she wanted a higher salary. We were a struggling young agency, and it was just too big of a stretch. She said, okay, but you'll see. And after her first project, she got the number she wanted. And later, she went on to fight that battle for so many in the industry. Both Maris and Bruce Treadwell were an incredible dynamic duo back then, a perfect complement to each other in so many ways, and they made it all look easy. They both took me under their wings, my creative parents, they patched me up, they protected me, they shined me up, and never exposed me to risk beyond my capabilities at that time. Maris took it upon herself, before it was popular, to be sure there was equity among all her team members. She hired the first African-American copy person in the department. And, you know, that set the stage for so many others to be successful. But at the time, it was unheard of. I mean, you could barely get females uh, in, let alone, you know, people of color. A crusader in that way. She had equal status to the account guys running that business, and they knew it. And so if Maris had something to say, as you know, she'd say it and they would listen to her because she was a real part of their team. She was part of what made them so successful. Clients loved her. 
I would be freaking out, as we account people sometimes do, and I would call her up, I'm like, Maris, Maris, we have to do this, we have to do this, we have to do this, we only have 20 days, how are we going to get it done? And she would just say, ah, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And I, you know, couldn't believe it, but in 20 days, it was done, it was done perfectly, and we would laugh all the way. Maris was an enormously warm, gifted, creative, caring uh, person whose, uh, whose impact pervaded uh, every hall of KPR, making KPR what it was. When it came time for my annual review, I had a very unusual experience. She closed the door and handed me a single sheet of paper with a few paragraphs on it that said, I really don't have anything to offer you in the way of criticism. Um, in my experience, to have your boss on the creative side of this business give you a review like that is, is very unusual. It's certainly the only review like that I ever got. And she signs it in typical Maris fashion, amen, your favorite boss. Family was the most important thing to Maris. She never, ever put it second to work. It was always first. I mean, that's one of the reason that she went freelance in the beginning was so that she could be a, a mother who was present to Allison. She did it all for her daughter. When she went to Sloan Kettering, her big concern was, how am I going to tell all of these new doctors my story over and over again? And so what she did was she made a PowerPoint, <laughs> and she became known as, like, the PowerPoint patient. So they were amazed. They were, they were just like, holy cow. She really couldn't believe that this was happening and was so excited. You were nominated as a doctor. Medical advertising Oh my God! Oh my God! <laughs> well, can I, uh, well, thank you. I'm sorry you're catching me in bed. I just got home from Sloan Kettering. I had some treatment this morning, and I was like, "All right, I'm gonna nap now." And then. <laughs> Then Ava, the times. apparently, and then Ava came over, and she said, oh, I got an email, uh, uh, so, looks like some kind of work thing, I got a, so can I give you my actual email? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, was, I was going through a divorce when we were working uh, as partners, and uh, so I was alone for the first time. You know, we were working at home, I was alone, I was going through this divorce. She called me every day, every day. She would spend hours on the phone with me to make sure that I was doing okay, you know? Who's gonna do that? Who does that? Nobody does that. She did it. Love you, Maris. Wish you were here to enjoy this night, Maris. You earned it, kiddo. I just want to say that we're very, very proud of you, and we miss you every day. I miss you, Mayor. Hey, Maris. To accomplish what you did as a Brooklyn girl, was inspirational to this Brooklyn girl. And I gotta tell you, I miss you.